OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Okay, hello everyone. Anthony Beer, um, OTAN Project Specialist. Welcome to my session today, helping individuals acquire digital literacy skills. Um, we're so excited to see you here today. Um, and at the bottom of this slide, and actually the bottom of the next slide, I do have a link to some resources that I want to share with you um, from today's session, a copy of these slides, and also um, a notes document that we're going to be using later on as we get into the session. Um, it is a bit.ly address, bit.ly slash um, capital TDLS 22 dig or dig, D-I-G, lit, L-I-T, folder. It is case sensitive, so make sure you're typing it exactly as you see it. Um, and then hopefully that will bring you to the folder and you can get, uh, get my resources for today. So here's our agenda for today's session. We're gonna be together for about 90 minutes or so, maybe 80 at this point. Um, so first I wanted to just give you all a definition of digital literacy, kind of our starting point. Like how do people define digital literacy? What's kind of our common understanding of what digital literacy is? I'm gonna talk about a newish um, digital literacy framework called the Seattle Digital Skills Framework. The framework is divided into uh, 10 domains. So we'll take a look at those domains. What are the contents of those domains? Um, and kind of get a basic understanding of how the framework is organized. And then um, I want us to take a look at some resources, digital li literacy resources that you might consider using as a part of your instruction um, to work on um, or address uh, certain digital literacy skills that you want your students or your clients or, the, or your colleagues um, to be aware of and be practicing and getting to know, um, uh, you know, back at your schools, back at your agencies, things like that. And then um, also, um, I want us to also think about sort of in a larger sense, how do we really start integrating these resources into our instruction, into our practice, into our ways of doing things? Um, the last two years have basically been a, an exercise in integrating digital literacy skills into our lives. Um, I'm not sure we were all prepared for that two years ago, but here we are. Um, and so we certainly ourselves have had a lot of practice uh, trying to figure out how to integrate um, technology and digital skills and digital um, life into our lives. Um, so I want us to think about how do we do that kind of in an instructional sense, in a workplace sense, back at our agencies. Um, and again, there's the link again for um, uh, the resources for, for today's session. So just a word about OTAN, if you're not familiar with us. So um, we are very lucky in the state of California to have three state leadership projects that service um, adult education and adult, adult educators around the state. So hopefully you're familiar with all three. Um, CalPRO is one, CASAS is the second, and OTAN is the third. And OTAN focuses on uh, technology training for adult educators around the state. So um, in addition to TDLS, our three-day uh, three annual state conference, we do a lot of other things to help adult educators integrate technology into their practice. Um, so please make sure to reach out to us. I mean, we are so happy to talk about um, how to do that back at your agencies. Um, we are available for trainings. We go to conferences. We do all kinds of things. So. Um, Yes, please, if you don't already know us and are working with us, please reach out and we are happy to work with you. Okay, so let's start off um, with kind of a um, uh, talking about what is digital literacy? Like what is our understanding of digital literacy? So, um, you know, I think when you start talking to folks about digital literacy, it's pretty apparent or be, it becomes apparent that sometimes we have different understandings of what digital literacy means. So, you know, something that's very typical at adult education agencies is um, kind of an introduction to computers course or an introduction to technology course or a technology orientation, um, something to that effect. And so um, on the screen here, I've actually included part of a flyer that I saw recently from an adult school, um, you know, talking about some of the classes that the school is offering um, that's going to help students kind of get started with their digital ability. So, you know, very typical classes, you know, introduction to keyboarding or introduction to typing, introduction to computers, introduction to Word, Excel, things like that. 
And sometimes when I talk with folks, um, this is kind of what their understanding of digital literacy is, right? It's that kind of basic orientation, that um, basic understanding of computers and things like that. And that's not to say that that's not a part of digital literacy, but I think when we um, when we think about you know the possibilities, and really, like I say, kind of our experience over the last couple of years, um, we really need to think about digital literacy in a much broader sense. So this is sort of the starting point, perhaps, but we really want to be able to expand our um, understanding of what digital literacy is, because we really want to think about it from the student's point of view, right? So what is it that students are going to need? in order to you know, um, be successful workers and students and parents and community members and citizens and things like that. And how does digital literacy match up with those different roles that we play in society? So um, this is a definition of digital literacy from the American Library Association. And some of you may be familiar with this. Um, it's been around for about 10 years or so. So um, it's it's got some legs underneath it. And I think a lot of people, um, we'll come back to this definition of digital literacy um, as sort of a starting point. So um, I've taken the definition and kind of divided it up into, into parts here. Um, it doesn't normally look like this. It looks like just one paragraph <laughs> so or one sentence. Um, but I kind of broke it up because I think it, it helps me sort of look at the complexity of digital literacy. So the first is um, digital literacy is the ability to use information and communication technologies to find, evaluate, create, communicate information requiring both cognitive and technical skills. So again, if we kind of look at the different parts here, the first part, the information and communication technology. So it's not just like one thing, like it's not just in that um, introduction to Microsoft Word course, like it's not just Microsoft Word or Excel or um, knowing the pieces of the computer or things like that. Like it's a whole bunch of different kinds of technologies. Um, so that's one component. The next is like all of the different things that we can, um, once we're more digitally literate, that we're going to be able to do. So finding, evaluating, creating, communicating information, but also a lot of other things as well. And that this is something that requires both cognitive and technical skills. So sometimes we think about it in a very sort of technical sense, like, OK, how do I do this? Like, how do I turn on the computer? How do I create a Word document? Um, but there's also all the cognitive going on, right? So it's really kind of understanding, like, what is this technology, like, not only like, what can I do with this technology? How does it work? But sort of like, how can I take this out into the world with me, right? So if I understand how to fill out a form, for example, like a, like a Google form or a Microsoft form, then that really sort of opens up the possibilities for people, right? They can, they can feel more confident, like applying for a job online because they're going to be filling out a form maybe um, financial documents or bank documents, maybe, um, you know, for their child's school, you know, the forms that the school is sending to the parents for meetings or permissions or, you know, whatever the case may be. So if they have that kind of cognitive understanding of completing a form and what that means and where it might ap appear in their lives, um, then that's really going to expand their digital literacy ability. Okay. Um, so kind of moving on from that basic definition, um, kind of expanding it some more. So looking at um, some of the work that the NDIA has done, National Digital Inclu Inclusion Alliance has done, they actually have sort of five components of what makes up a digital, uh, digitally literate person. So let's, kind of, let's look at those one by one. So the first is um, a digitally literate person possesses the variety of skills, technical and cognitive, required to find, understand, evaluate, create, and communicate digital information in a wide variety of formats. This is very much what we just saw, the ALA definition, kind of in, um, uh, set in a different way. And it, but again, it's only one, one component, OK? Um, the next uh, component, it, a person is able to use diverse technologies appropriately and effectively to retrieve information, interpret results, and judge the quality of that information. So there's very much a, fo an, a focus on information. Um, we are in the information revolution. We've moved on. Well, I don't know if we've moved on from the industrial, um, but we're, we're pretty much in the information revolution at this point. Um, so you know, being able to work with information really has a, a key place in our current world. Um, the third component, a, a digitally literate person understands the relationship between technology, lifelong learning, personal privacy, and stewardship of information. 
Um, these are pretty big topics. Um, and to really understand the relationship between all of these topics is again, another component of being digitally literate. Um, you know, looking at the personal privacy issue, you know, especially like the use of data, you know, big companies have our data, you know, so how are they using that data? What is the ethics of that data use? I mean, this is a pretty big topic, but a digitally literate person sort of has a, a basic understanding of that issue and can, you know, begin to think about like what that looks like. Um, a digitally literate person um, uses these skills, so the ones that we just mentioned in the first three components, and the appropriate technology to communicate and collaborate with peers, colleagues, families, and on occasion, the general public. And so I think we really see, um, especially, you know, maybe not so much in, in 2010 and 2011, but definitely in 2021, 20, uh, 2022, the use of technology to communicate and collaborate with people, right? Um, this is very much, you know, think about social media, for example. Um, you know, this is really something that um, a digitally literate person will have a, a pretty good understanding of. And then finally, um, this person uses these skills to actively participate in civic society and contribute to a vibrant, informed, and engaged community. And we always hope that, you know, um, this person will do these things for the good of civic society, <laughs> the good of humanity. Uh, not always the case, um, but really that's kind of the hope in terms of being able to be a digitally literate person and use technology really for the benefit of themselves and their, and their larger community. So, so I do think, you know, this, this does, you know, looking at the, the definition and the components really gives us an opportunity to kind of take a look in the mirror <laughs> and think for ourselves, like, okay, based on what I just saw, what I just saw in my kind of understanding of what digitally liter li what digital literacy is, um, do I feel like I'm a digitally literate person, right, for myself? And, you know, this is really important question for all of us who are working with students and clients and in our communities, like, because um, we're, you know, we're being asked to bring our ability into the classroom, into the school, into the community centers, and, um, and help people out and teach people. Um, so how much do we know and how much do we feel comfortable doing with technology? And, um, you know, I was think I was, um, some of you were at the keynote yesterday with Les Leslie Fisher, and she was talking about kind of some of the future, you know, the future things coming up in technology. And, you know, the whole um, visual, uh, virtual reality, for example, and AI, artificial intelligence, and things like that. And I really feel like I just don't have a handle on that at all, right? So I know for myself, even though I work for OTAN and I think about technology a lot. Like I also know, like I, <laughs> I have a lot of learning to do as well when it comes to digital literacy. So I'm hoping that we're all sort of starting to think about digital literacy in a much broader sense. Um, and that it's not really just a couple of things, but it's really like a lot of things that we wanna be able to do. So what I'd like you to do now um, is I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you fill out a survey here in a second, but I'd like you to think about a challenge, a digital, a digital literacy challenge that your students or your colleagues or folks in your community are currently facing. Like what, what is something that you find that um, some of these folks are really struggling with when it comes to technology? And I want you to kind of think about that like very specifically, like what is that specific um, challenge that they're facing right now? So, what I'd like you to do, what I'd like us to do is actually take a, take a quick survey here. Um, I'm going to go ahead also pop the link uh, to the survey in the chat so you can get to it much easier. And um, let me go ahead and stop sharing. And I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the, um, the form here. Uh, I'm going to move one thing out of the way. Get back to my... This is this is always a challenge for me. My a test of my digital literacy ability here. Uh, where did I put it? There we go. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully, you're able to get to the survey. Okay, so um, if you're able to get to the survey, it should look something like this: TDLS uh, 2022 acquiring digital li literacy skills. Um, this is a, um, I'm using a Microsoft form to complete um, this or to create this survey. Um, I know a lot of folks use Google forms, um, you know, part, as part of the, the Google EDU suite. 
Um, I'm actually using Microsoft Form. It's very similar to a Google Form. Um, one nice thing that I like about uh, Microsoft Forms is some of you are familiar in Microsoft with this tool called Immersive Reader. And if you turn on the Immersive Reader, what this allows you um, to do is actually listen to the words being spoken as you're reading the text. So this is a really good um, feature in, in Microsoft um, apps, um, especially like for ESL students or sometimes for, for your ABE students who are still kind of struggling with the, with the language initially. Um, so you might consider using a Microsoft form, um, uh, you know, especially if you have those, those student populations um, so that, you know, it kind of gives them, if they're having trouble with the reading, it gives them another way into the form, into the information. Okay, and it looks like folks are starting to complete the survey, so I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, again, if you're using Google Forms regularly or Microsoft Forms, you know that this it's a dynamic form, so we're getting um, information in real time here. So folks are completing the form. So it looks like, oop, yeah, automatically is updating. So it looks like we have some administrators in the room. Welcome. Uh, no teachers. That's uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Interesting. Uh, well, no teachers at the moment anyway. Okay. There's our first teacher. Welcome. Um, class five folks. Welcome. Um, I'm always interested to know about the others. What are the others doing? Are you like librarians? Are you counselors? Are you um, community folks? If you want to pop that in the chat, that'd be great. Okay. Um, folks are completing the form. Thank you so much. Um, what's your program area your um, or work area? So it looks like we have uh, ESL folks in the room. Good. We have classified folks, office fo um, office staff, administrative staff. Great. Um, high school, ABE, ASC. Perfect. Okay. Other again. Nice. Okay. Good. All right. So um, I was just curious kind of how people um, sort of rate your own tech proficiency. So on a scale from one to four, one being beginner level, four being tech expert at your school. So um, right about three, three out of four. So yeah, pretty good. Um, still, some, still some room for growth. Okay, nice. All right, and then let's look at um, some of the challenges that are coming in, what y'all are working on. Um, okay, so for folks who are working in corrections, Right, students have never had access to technology. Um, that I mean, it's not even that they don't know how to use it; like they they don't even have access to it. Okay, um, getting getting uh, used to online learning. Okay, good. Um, being able to collaborate, share information, interact with others. Okay, that collaborative piece, the collaboration and communication. Um, a, basic, yeah, lacking a basic understanding of like, you know, what they're doing, right? So, okay, very good. One-on-one -on -one help, like tech support, okay, understanding browsers, online, what is the cloud, how to navigate, use of Google, use of tools, share devices, um, knowing that they can succeed, right? At, in the beginning, everything is daunting, so, right, so are they able to kind of overcome those those cognitive and intellectual hurdles, right? Online learning, lack of access, lack of Wi-Fi, lack of devices, slow internet, uh, registering online. Okay, good. So nice. So we have. Thank you so much. Yeah, we have a we have a nice mix of um, challenges um, and good. They really. I'm glad this really really um, reflects the. Um, you know, sort of the the um, the real variety of components of digital literacy. Like, there's all kinds of things that we're struggling with in terms of technology, um, and we're also and we're also aware of what those challenges are, right? And then, so that's our kind of a place for us to think about how do we get started addressing those challenges back at our agency. Okay, so moving on, um, I want to talk some about the um, this new, uh, relatively new framework, um, digital digital skills framework called the Seattle Digital Skills Framework. And um, it's from about like 2019 or so, 2019, 2020. So it's you know within the last few years. Um, an important note about this framework is that the people who put this framework together, they actually didn't start from scratch. They didn't say like, okay, let's, let's start from the beginning. Let's think about all the different digital skills that folks need to have and then sort of build the framework from there. What they did was they actually looked at um, six digital literacy, six other digital literacy frameworks and nine other digital literacy curricula. 
And basically what they did was they looked at what, the, you know, what were the commonalities across these frameworks and curricula? And then, and repeatedly, what were the skills that really kind of stood out? What were the ones that were always mentioned by the frameworks or mostly mentioned by the frameworks? And so what they did was what they, you know, they, they compiled that kind of raw data as it were. And then they sort of reorganized those skills into the 10 domains that we're going to take a, a look at here briefly. So again, just, just to know that like they really meant to sort of build on the work that people have already been doing in terms of looking at digital skills, digital literacy, digital ability, things like that. And really like in essence, sort of create kind of like a list of priorities. Like what are the, th what are the skills that people are always talking about that our skills uh, that our students need or our clients need or things like that. Okay, so let's look at these. Um, let's look at these domains one by one. Um, I'm presenting the domains to you like they are in the framework alphabetically. So it's not it's not from like least important to most important. This is just the ten domains are going to come at you alphabetically. Um, so let's take a look at them. So the first one, communication. So basically, exchanging information with others on digital platforms using various strategies to collaborate, share, and communicate. And you'll see in this domain that there are eight items in the domain. Um, some of the ones that stand out are um, using social media, um, being able to collaborate um, with using technology and communicate with others. The next domain is creation. Um, this is engaging in digital spaces to design, create, and revise content online. So a couple of the items, a couple of the eight items in this domain include um, coding, um, building a website, um, reusing digital content, and others. The next domain is device ownership. These are practices that support device longevity, including physical care, protective software, and using tech support. Um, four items in this domain. Again, the one that kind of stands out is really this tech support um, issue. The next domain is essential foundations. Um, and so I would say that probably, you know, there are some folks who really kind of equate digital literacy with essential foundations, but it's really only one domain in the framework. Um, these are the foundational skills required to use a device and participate online. So, you know, being able to set up an email account, um, understanding the components of your computer, using a mouse, um, some basic search, internet search. Next domain is information skills. These are skills to apply, evaluate, and manage information across digital and physical environments. Um, th there are seven items in this domain. And again, this really kind of focuses on those information skills that we feel are really important um, in, our current, um, in our current age. Next uh, domain is lifelong learning. This is engagement in self-assessment of digital skills using self-reflection to tailor accessible digital environments and continue digital skills learning. There are three items uh, in this domain. And um, one of them that stands out for me is being able to adapt to new technology. So we, we definitely have um, the last two years, if nothing else, have been a trial in adapting to new technology um, in all its various uh, shapes and forms. Uh, the next domain is mobile um, or mobile, um, understanding uh, basic functions of a mobile device to communicate and access goods and services. So think about using mobile apps, um, being able to use your device um, for any number of uh, uh, parts of your life. The next domain is online life, access to online resources that support digi digitalization of daily tasks and socialization within a broader digital community. There are 11 items in this domain. Um, a lot of these have to do with sort of um, your, your role as a member of a community or society. So for example, being able to find community resources, um, transportation tools, entertainment, um, being a good online citizen, um, watching your language online, all that kind of stuff. The next domain is privacy and security. Uh, this is the maintenance of practices to secure digital identity, recognize threats, and understand the broader safety implications of working in a digital environment. Seven items in this domain. A lot of this has to do with um, privacy, um, your, your data being online. How do you keep your kids safe? How do you keep your, the other adults that you know safe online? Um, any kind of threats coming from online? How to recognize them, what, how to deal with them? And then the last domain is the workplace domain. 
um, advancing workplace success and professionalism through engagement with an organization's online tools and, uh, and other supportive digital systems. I do think um, these nine items, um, workplace items in this domain, really, you know, these are very key for us in adult education because of the importance of getting our students into the workforce, transit, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, transitioning them from um, secondary, post-secondary studies into, you know, into the workplace, things like that. And then once they're in the workplace, being able to be good um, uh, employees and workers and knowing how to use technology in a workplace setting. Okay, so that was like a, a quick run through the 10 domains um, of the framework. So what I'd like you to do um, is, and what I'm gonna do is if you didn't have a chance to um, get the resources in the folder, I'm sharing the link to my resources again in the chat if you came into the room later, whatever. What I'm going to do is um, what I'd like us to do for a minute, a couple of minutes here, is for all of you to kind of take a, another run through the framework um, and again, kind of get a general understanding of those 10 domains. And then what I'd like you to do is to find the domain in which your um, in which the skill you identified in your survey is mentioned. So where where in the framework can you kind of place or locate that um, digital skill uh, challenge that you're working with back at your agency? And then while you're there, um, I also want you to kind of just notice the other skills that are mentioned in the domain. So for example, um, let's say um, you're having um, a challenge with your students, getting them um, email addresses, um, you want them to have email so that they can stay, you can stay connected with them, they can stay connected with the school, things like that. So again, if that challenge is about email, then I think the domain that is probably the most appropriate here is the essential foundations domain. And so if you look down the list here at item number eight, there's get an email account. So, you know, setting up an email account, that's probably a good starting point. But then think about the other skills that are mentioned in this domain that relate to that. So for example, once you get an email account, you'll want to know about how to send and receive email. You'll also want to know about creating safe passwords, right? Because when you set up that account and any and any online account for that matter, so that's kind of, you know, this cognitive understanding of, of technology, um, you're going to want to have a safe password, right? So you protect your you protect your online information. Um, and then, um, you know, if you're working on understanding the internet, so um, pretty, you know, when you when you get online and you start working online, you'll notice we all kind of know this, but you know, maybe our students don't always know this that you know you really need to bring that um, email information with you into the you know to the in, into the online setting, right? You, maybe you're going to be setting up um, an online account for your bank, or maybe you're going to be setting up an online account for the school. Or maybe you're going to be setting up an online account at your favorite clothing store, for example. So um, it's not just setting up an email account; like it's it's what happens after that. Like, what are the related skills um, that go along with setting up an email account? So, okay, hopefully you've had a chance to take a look at that. Actually, let me let me just stop my share for. Uh, actually, let me do this. Uh, oops, there we go. Okay, so I just want to make sure, we'll go back to that in a second. So I just want to make sure that you can see the two documents that I'm referring to. So you, um, hopefully you have my slides. And then the other document, I believe is this one. So um, this is the notes document that I've shared with you in the folder. So when we talk about the framework, if you scroll down to the top of page two, so here's a link to that framework. It's actually the second bullet under Seattle Digital Literacy Framework. You can go ahead and open that up and you'll actually get a copy of the framework yourself. Um, it's a Google Doc, so you actually can make a copy and save it to your, to your drive if you would like. And if you're looking for sort of the background on the framework, um, I've also included the original or a link to the original report. Um, you can read about their methodology and how they actually came up with the framework. So, but I wanna make sure folks are able to get to this document. Okay, so let me go back to the uh, slides here. So um, I'd like for us um, 
to, um, if you can use your Zoom annotate tool, um, if you know how to do that. So if you're looking at your Zoom toolbar, um, it's, it's kind of on the rightish side of your toolbar. It says annotate, there's a little pencil icon. So if you can go ahead and um, open up your Zoom annotate tool, and if you're not very familiar with annotate, um, I would recommend the stamp um, feature. So go ahead and select one of the stamps. And if you can, can you go ahead and um, stamp the domain where your challenge lies, if you're able to do that? Mm, OK, so I, I see people are getting it. OK, so again, if you can stamp the domain where your challenge lies. So uh, Dominique, what, so uh, if you, so on the screen, you should see a chart with the 10 domains. And then if you open up your Zoom annotate tool, so it's on your toolbar, click on annotate, it's gonna open up a separate um, kind of um, uh, bar, toolbar of options. One of the options is stamp. If you click on stamp, you can stamp, uh, you should be able to stamp your screen. Nothing says annotate. Yeah, Anthony, I don't see anything that says annotate on my toolbar either for some reason. Okay, which if you, which you might, where you might look is at the far right of your toolbar, it says more with three dots. Click on that more, op, more option if you see it and it might be there. I don't have more. So one, okay, so one other place that it might be is if you are looking, oh, okay, if you look, sorry, uh, maybe I gave you the wrong, maybe I'm looking at my toolbar, not your toolbar, that's fine. Okay, oh, that's sorry, 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 up at the top, sorry, I was looking down, up at the top where it says options or view options, click there on we that go. and there that's it. Annotate. it. Okay. Okay. Now I got it, thank you. Yeah, you can tell that I'm rusty with my use of the Zoom annotate toolbar. <laughs> Hey, that's all right. Okay, so I'll give you I'll give you a second for those of you who um who I whom I gave the wrong instructions to. Okay, so let's see kind of let's see what's rising to the top here. Um, good. So it looks like again we kind of have a mix of um, domains that are. Oops, that's my. Oh, that's why. Hold on, I need to. I need to do that. Um, so it looks like a, a number of domains, good. So a lot of, uh, not a lot, but a number of essential foundations um, um, stamps, also device ownership stamps. Also, um, we see information skills, we see lifelong learning, we see privacy and security. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Okay, so again, good. This looks like the, um, <laughs> um, yeah, again, we're, so this is kind of a nice sort of visual representation of the, of the variety, um, um, of the, uh, variety of, um, domains that we're, we're thinking about when we're thinking about, you know, the digital skills that we need to work on with our students and our clients. So again, I hope, again, you have that sense of a, a really sort of full, but sort of the full breadth of digital literacy and what we're really talking about. We're not just talking about a couple of things, we're talking about a lot of things that we want our students to be able to do. Okay, I'm gonna go, thank you so much for doing this. I'm actually gonna go ahead and clear this. And um, you can go ahead and close your annotate and then let's move on. Okay, so, all right. So we have a challenge, a digital literacy challenge that we're thinking about. Um, and we kind of have a sense um, in this um, skills framework, like where does that challenge lie? And then maybe some of the other skills that might go along with that challenge as well, or maybe maybe these other skills actually help us kind of fill out our understanding of the challenge. Like it's not just getting an email account, but then it's like, okay, what do I do with this? How do I use it? How can I use it in other settings, for example? So, okay, so we have a sense of a challenge. We have a sense of where it's gonna fall in this domain. So let's start thinking about, okay, how, how are we gonna address this? What are, we gonna, what are we gonna bring to the classroom? What are we gonna bring to our schools? What are we gonna bring to our communities that's going to help our students and our clients really um, start acquiring these digital literacy skills that, they're, that, they're, um, that they need to, you know, that they wanna get, that they need to get. Um, that are going to help them in their lives. So 
on the back on the notes document, um, right under that um, digital skills framework section, the next section um, has to do with a list of digital or a set of digital literacy websites um, that include resources that you can use to do the instruction and the teaching and the um, the training that you're gonna that you're gonna do with others. And I. It's a little, uh, it's a little uh, subjective, but the the list I have there sort of goes from what I would consider to be some more some more of the kind of basic skills, like those essential foundation skills, kind of moving down the list into the more advanced skills and topics. So if you're looking at your notes document, this is what we're looking at here at the moment. So again, towards the top, I would say kind of the more basic skills. So like if it's if it's even like basic vocabulary, like the components of, a, of, the, of your computer um, and devices and peripherals and things like that. Um, if it's typing, like a lot of students like aren't very good typists, so maybe they, they need typing practice. And then um, kind of in that middle part of the list there, uh, GCF Learn Free, Digital Learn, North Star, Tech Boomers. So there, um, um, some of you are already familiar with these sites, but these are really good like foundational sites like okay a lot of those a lot of those skills are covered um, by those by these sites in particular when you get towards the bottom of the list here the 21 things for students the um the basic computer skills mooc learn my way google apply digital skills now we're talking about skills that are a little bit more complex right so it's not necessarily foundational skills it's really you have those foundation you have those foundational skills and now we're we're on to the next uh, the next things, the more complex digital skills training. So that's kind of that's basically how it's organized. There's a there's a, a bit of overlap, but I would say that these are um, um, this set of sites is a really good place to start. And again, you might be familiar with a couple of these sites, but um, there are other sites that are out there, and um, hopefully you'll have a chance to take a look at these um, sites and really kind of dig into them. Okay, so um, we're going to try another activity here. Let's see how this goes. Um, okay, so what I would like you to do is um, choose one of the websites from the list. And I'd like you to see if there's any, um, if there are any resources, any materials that you might consider using when you are wanting to address this digital skills challenge. Okay, and in the folder, there is that TDLS uh, worksheet, digital literacy worksheet. So that's what we're gonna try to use here. So what I'd like you to do is on, on one of the rows, go ahead and pick a row, is you're gonna add the domain. So one of the 10 domains from the framework, you're gonna add the skill, and then you're gonna link to a resource, okay? And so let's do one, let's do an example um, uh, so I can show you what we're talking about here. So I'm going to stop. Oops. Sorry about that. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to stop my PowerPoint. Okay, I'm going to switch over to the folder here. Okay, um, this is my view of the folder, but you, if you're looking at the folder, you should see these three, um, these three um, files in there. So my PowerPoint, my notes, and then this worksheet. So if everybody can open up the worksheet, now, um, this is if you're used to like Google Docs, um, this is a little bit clunky. Sorry, Microsoft. Good with some things, not good with others. So um, I believe, so I think I've already enabled this. And actually, let me do this. OK. Oh, it looks like some of you are already there. Fantastic. OK. I believe when you first come into the file, you take a look up here in the upper left-hand corner. And it actually asks you to open this Word document. Okay. And I believe that one of the options it will give you is to open in a browser. Um, I would recommend that one. And then once you open up the, uh, the Word document, however, you, um, well, probably you want to open it in a browser, then you should be able to join this worksheet. And then um, we can do some work here. So, um, so what I'm, what I'm, um, suggesting as an activity again this is a challenge this is a challenge for all of us in our digital literacy ability but this is what oh i'm still in that's why i'm still in my annotate that's why okay so here's what i'm suggesting so pick a row 
let's say um, I want to, it's in the essential foundations domain. Okay. And uh, essential foundations domain. And it's setting up an email account. Email account. I know that this is a real, this is a challenge that I'm currently facing with my students and my class. Okay. Then I have the list of, uh, let me go back here. I'm going to look at this notes document again. So we're, we're doing a bit of multitasking here. So um, doesn't have a preview. Oh, I need to open it. Hold on. In a second. Okay. So what I'm suggesting here for the activity is on page two of the notes. If you can take a look at this part, this digital literacy resources part of the notes document. So I'm going to take a look at this um, this website called GCF Learn Free. I've heard about it. Some of my colleagues back at my agency have used it before. I haven't really used it myself. I'm going to take a look at it and see what see what's up. And so again, the challenge that I'm trying to address with my students is the email accounts, right? So let's see, does GCF Learn Free have anything about email and using email, setting up email, things like that? I'm going to take a look at the topics menu. And GCF Learn Free, oh, wow, there's actually quite a bit here, right? A lot of technology resources. Oh, look at this. In fact, they actually have um, something about email. So let's take a look at that. And um, on the GCF Learn Free website, okay, email. Use our free email basics tutorials to learn the essentials of creating and maintaining email accounts so you can communicate with on uh, communicate online. Okay, so let's see what else they got here. They've got basics, they've got Gmail, and then beyond email. So probably if it's getting students set up with email, um, I'm probably going to want to take a look and see what they've got here, right? And maybe we need to go back to even just sort of an introduction to email, like what is email? How does it work? Um, features of email, things like that, okay? So this one looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this link and I'm gonna go back to that worksheet. I'm gonna go ahead and paste that into um, under the resources or in the resource column, okay? And now, okay, now I have a resource that I can use potentially um, back with my students. Um, here's, a, here's one place maybe we can get started with helping students understand how to set up an email account. Okay. Um, so let me give, let's, let's give the, the room a couple of minutes here. Try that out. See how that goes for you. I'm hoping we can sort of collaborate here, build a, build a sort of collaborative document. So if you want to come back and take a look at the resources that folks have shared, um, maybe um, it'll save you a little bit of, save you a little bit of work. And let me know if you have questions about that, what we're, what we're working on at the moment. I'm going to take a look at the chat um, while we are, while you're doing that. Let me just see if you have any questions or anything. Let me close that up, actually. Um, okay, let me open the chat now. There we go. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, or comments, go ahead and add them to the chat as you were working. Or any questions about what we're doing right now or what you're attempting to do. Maybe taking a minute or two to kind of just look at that framework again, um, take a look at, at some of the sites, GCF Learn Free or the North Star sites. Good, a lot of people. Majority are the are the essential foundations. Okay. We had one for mobile as well. Okay, good. Yeah, let me know if you have any questions or comments or thoughts so far about what we've covered. Or you're giving it a try. Or maybe you're still sleepy from your lunch. Maybe you're checking your email. No judgment. No judgment here. Let's see what's going on up here. Oh, interesting. I don't know this. Amazon AWS. Oh, okay. Good, good, good. Okay. Yeah, link to a learning chocolate. Yeah, good. Again, some of those basic 
basic computer skills and basic kind of understanding of computers and things like that. Okay, understanding my computer, using the mouse. Good. Um, if some of you are having trouble, you might still have your annotate toolbar active. So you do need to close that. And then um, once you close that, then, um, then you should be able to type in the document. If you're if you're having trouble getting into the document, okay. Dominique, yeah, Dominique. So um, just an answer to your question. So um, we do recommend during TDLS that you have the most current version of Zoom on your devices. That's what that may be the issue. Um, if you have an older version of Zoom, um, then you may not see some of the things that other folks are seeing in their Zoom. Um, um, or you might not be able to do some of the things that um, other folks are able to do. So yeah, just make sure you have the most current version of Zoom on your device. That, I, I think that's probably the, the, uh, the issue there. Okay, good. Okay, good. Yeah, nice. We're getting sort of a variety of resources as well. So from the Lynx site, um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Lynx, um, Lynx is actually a, a nationwide resource for adult educators. Um, they have a really robust uh, website with a lot of things on it. So, um, well, I think actually Lynx is mentioned in the, in the next set, but Lynx is a great site to check out as well for lots of, lots of resources. So, okay, lots of GCF Learn Free. Yeah, GCF Learn Free is a really great site, Let a lot of basic stuff. Okay, North Star, perfect, good, Learning Chocolate. Good, good, good. Okay. And I would say, you know, after today, you know, these sites, um, these are really good sites to keep exploring um, if you're not very familiar with them. Um, yeah, th there's, they have a lot of resources. Yeah, don't, um, you know, what I'm trying to do here is kind of give you a set of resources to start with rather than having to sort of like just go out on your own <laughs> onto the wild, wild internet, wild, wild web. Um, uh, you know, trying to kind of focus, keep your, keep your search focused here. So, um, good. 21 things for students. Good, good, good. Okay, good. Okay. All right. So good. So I think we have a, I think we have an idea here that, um, you know, in terms of like starting to think about how do we bring resources to bear to address the challenge that our students have or our clients have or our um, community members have or even our colleagues, you know, maybe back at our agencies, you know, um, we've all kind of learned different things over the last couple of years, you know, some folks have a better handle on the technology, some folks are still kind of struggling a bit. Um, but maybe there are some good resources here to use with your uh, colleagues as well. Okay, so I'm gonna have folks finish up that activity um, as you will. Meanwhile, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the presentation because I do wanna put you in breakouts for a few minutes just to kind of connect with people, um, share a few ideas here and there. Okay, good. So we've done our, act we've done our example. Oh, I think I'm a few slides ahead, one second. Okay, I am. Okay, so on the notes document then at, um, at the very bottom of the page two, um, I've also included a list of resources that are really more on the um, instructional end of things here. So, okay, so I, I have some resources, I've seen some materials, I have some online information that I can um, use in my classroom, share with my students, things like that. But how do I start like putting all of this together into instruction? Like, and also, really kind of putting together the content that I'm teaching with also how do I bring technology to bear on the content that I'm teaching, right? How do I kind of weave these things together? So I've also included a list of um, some instructional resources that you might take a look at. So um, in the second, of course, uh, please visit the OTN website, shameless plug. Um, in the second bullet, um, some of the resources that we just talked about a few minutes ago also have kind of a dedicated um, teacher space or instructor space or, or tutor space. So you might take a look at how those resource, um, how those websites actually um, give you some ideas about how to use these resources with your students, how you might kind of set up your instruction. 
Um, I talked about links a, a minute ago. Um, there's also Teaching Skills That Matter. There's NDIA again, Digital Promise is another organization. And then actually a number of states are also have also kind of either created so, you know, something for in-state or in the, are in the process of doing so. Actually in California, um, we're working on something, something similar to the Maryland resources um, that you see listed here. So we wanna create sort of a digital impl implementation guide for adult educators in California. Hopefully that will be out um, by um, late spring, early summer or so. I know it's a kind of a tight timeline, but I know a lot of folks are working on that. So we definitely will announce that when that comes up. But there are, um, there are resources out there, instructional resources that can really help you think about like, how do I start putting all of these pieces together? So I'm really um, helping my students with the instruction or the training, really get the, the training that they need to build up their skills. Okay, here's our, here's our um, last activity of the session. So what I'd like you to do is I'm gonna open up the breakout rooms and um, you are free to join any of the 10 breakout rooms. There are 10 rooms, they correspond with the domains. So what I'd like you to do is um, in the breakout room, if one person, one or two people could offer to facilitate. And I'd like you to kind of think about these questions as, as your prompts. So maybe talk about what you're already doing at your agency to teach some of these digital literacy skills. Um, and or um, with some of the new resources that we've been exploring so far, um, how might you start using these resources in your instruction? And not just like if you're teaching a computer class, although that's one option, but maybe in your ESL class or in your CTE class, like how do we start integrating these resources into our instruction? OK, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up the breakout rooms. I'm going to open the rooms. OK, so you should see um, you should see a list of the 10 rooms. Um, if you click on, let me just make sure. Yes, at the bottom of your screen, <laughs> not the top, the bottom, you should now see a breakout rooms icon. Go ahead and click on that icon, and then you'll see the rooms. There are 10 of them. They correspond with the domains. At the far right of um, a listed item, you should see the word join. So if you hover over join, um, it's clickable. So then you can go ahead and join that room. So um, go ahead and join one of the rooms. So I um, hope you had um, good discussions in the breakout rooms. Thanks for doing that. Um, we still have about 10 minutes or so before we close up today. Um, I'm wondering, um, it looked like um, folks basically separated themselves into two rooms. One was the essential foundations room. And then a second was the, uh, I think it was the lifelong learning room. So I'm wondering if maybe, um, if, you, if um, those groups, those two groups could just share maybe two or three great tools that you would like to share with the rest of us, um, that'd be great. Or tools, ideas, thoughts, comments, anything like that. So I will, I'll open up the floor for anybody who wants to uh, come on mic, share with us what they learned, what, what y'all talked about. Don't be shy. So Anthony, I got to join the lifelong learning group. Um, I, I was just sharing my challenges as my agency doesn't have an LMS that we work with and they were just trying to uh, promote and I agree with uh, the resources OTAN might have to support like Moodle and I know there's some shifts going with that, the conversation of Canvas and, and trying to look at that. And then we just had a great conversation about the ways that we uh, try and support our, our students with the idea of going past the barrier of I can't do to yes, it's capable or uh, I, I see Dominic's face in here right now. And the last thing that we were talking about was that I wanted to show you how to turn something off or, or get to this one place where even showing the resource of pictures, but just knowing that understanding your resources, because then we said, well, oh, there's a, maybe a child in the room that's helping a, an adult to navigate, but that that's part of that learning process is you you need to learn who your resources are and, and getting that that access to uh, the individual that might support you, whether it's online or uh, physically in your house. Uh, we, we did comment that teenagers might roll their eyes and not help, but that, that's a whole other story too. <laughs> All right, Will, thank you so much. Um, anybody else from that from that lifelong 
learning group want to chime in with a, maybe just one other thing that you all talked about? Um, one of the things that was brought up was there's that barrier, the I can't learn, I can't do this. And I get that because in high school, I had the Dominique's math dumb wall is what I call it. You know, it's like I get the barrier and they do. They see this that, oh, I can't learn this. I'm too old. You know, but we remind them you're on Facebook. You do social media, you text, like you can figure this out because if you can go look up a TikTok video, you can push a button on a computer. So it's helping them translate what they currently are doing to a new, you know, to, it's scaffolding. Only we're going to use social media, what they are already doing to make that scaffold. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dominique. And it really, you know, I'm, I'm thinking back to the, um, our first look at the digital literacy definition, right? And that, <clears throat> excuse me, that emphasis on the cognitive, right? So it's it's not just the technical skills that we're imparting with digital literacy training, but it's that cognitive piece too. So yes, reminding people, okay, you can do this using technology. Okay, so let's look at those skills that you're using to watch videos online or watch TikTok videos or whatever. Can we bring those skills into another, you know, aspect of digital life, right? So it's helping, yeah, it's really kind of helping our students conceptually understand how to use technology and that they do know how to do things, right? It's, you know, they keep saying no, 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 no. And you're saying yes, 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 yes. So yeah, great. How about from our Essential Foundations group, anybody wanna chime in just one or two things that y'all talked about, any ahas or anything like that? Feel free to come on mic if you'd like. Don't be shy. It's a room of teachers. I know we never like to talk or do anything like that. So anything in the essential foundations group you want to share? Just one or one or two ahas or anything. Anything? Anything? Okay, I won't. Uh, uh, I won't ask anymore. <laughs> I know we're coming up on two thirty anyway, so um, we're probably ready for a break as well. So, okay, so let me um, just finish up a few things here, and then um, we will be on to our break. Let me share my screen again. Um, so I did. So um, in the chat, if you could, um, I did put a link to the evaluation for today's session in the chat. So if you can take a few minutes um, once we're finished to go ahead and fill that out, I would really appreciate it. Um, and then generally, you know, at the end of my session, I just kind of check in with folks as, and we do this kind of three, two, one reflection. Um, just an opportunity for you to think about three things. I hope, you know, hopefully three things, maybe some more things that you learned today. Um, any two things that you will share, you know, again, with your students, with uh, colleagues back at your agency, with folks in the community, with whatever populations you're working with. And then one thing that you'll try. So again, maybe it's a resource, one of the resources that you learned about today that you're really going to dig into. Um, maybe it's getting a really good understanding of that framework, um, really kind of having a, 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 um, a deep understanding of, of how that's organized. Um, maybe it's starting to think about how are you going to integrate the resource, the really cool resource that you found with what you're doing in your classroom as a part of your instruction. And again, if you could take a few minutes when we're finished to fill out that evaluation, that would be great. Um, otherwise, um, here's a beautiful slide from OTAN. We have a lot of, we, we do have a lot of digital literacy uh, resources on the OTAN website, OTAN.us. So, Make sure you take a look and see what's there. And then one of the other things that we do a lot is training. So um, if you do happen to have a request for training for your teachers or colleagues back at your agency, um, please reach out to us. Um, probably the easiest way to do so is to email us. Um, and I'll put that in the chat again, support at OTAN.us. Um, and then we're more than happy to talk to you about scheduling a training for your agency. We do trainings. Um, in all different kinds of um, areas, all different kinds of tools, um, technology topics. So we're more than happy to work with you to bring a training to your agency. 
um, whether it's now or next school year, over the summer, whatever the case may be.